Praise the Lord. Well, I found the ugliest sweater I could wear. Oh, yeah, this is the ugliest sweater in this church. I'm going to tell you right now, I whoop my kid for wearing these clothes. Um, somebody asked me, where did you get that? I said, I was throwing the trash out yesterday, and a neighbor had uh, put it in there. <laughs> uh, isn't it fun to be saved? Always makes me laugh. You got them longhorn people talking, that's the best shirt I've ever seen in my life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to wear an OU one. Uh, Kind of split the difference. Kind of split the difference, man. It's good to see everybody here. If you got your Bibles, go with me to Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. What about last week's service? Wasn't that an awesome service, man? We had a great, we're still getting great feedback from last week's service and, and, and great things that God did. Um, it was just incredible. And this morning, I think we're, we're just going to continue on that. Don't forget that services are next Saturday. Because if you come on Sunday, and here's the whole reason people say, well, it's Christmas. Why are y'all doing church on Sunday? Because it takes a lot of cogs in this wheel to make this turn. It's not just one guy on a stage. There's about 60 people that volunteer per service. And all 60 people couldn't be here for next week. And so, But they said, we can help you on Christmas Eve if you did it Christmas Eve. And we're like, awesome. We'll just do that, man. And then that way can, everybody can go and enjoy. So I know that there's always going to be that one person that is super spiritual that will say, I can't believe you're not having Christmas on, or service on Christmas on Jesus' birthday. If you're waiting for one day a year to celebrate Jesus, you're already in bad shape anyway. Let me, let me just throw that ball back at you. If you're waiting until one day to get your praise on, I'm sorry I ruined your year. Um, but next year, you might, January 1st is coming. It'll be a good time to get started on a new, on a new resolution. Amen? I'm going to worship God all year, all year. Every day. Come on, somebody. Every day of every week. It's all good. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 9. Now, if y'all walk up on Miss Trish and you see that boot on, don't believe no lie she tells you. But I'll tell you this. She will not be doing that. No, I'm just playing. Uh, Matthew chapter 2. <laughs> I got to apologize to ex's mom. I, I lied to her before church. We was out in the hall, and Xavier said, if I knew we was going to wear ugly sweaters, I'd have worn my Dallas Cowboy. I'd have got a Dallas Cowboy sweater. I said, look, your mama don't want you to know this, but I'm going to tell you. You're adopted. And uh, <laughs> I told her before church I wasn't going to tell, but look here, you done. I can't help myself. can't help myself. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 9. So I'm sorry, but he knows now. So better. He old enough to know better. Okay. Matthew 2 verse 9 says this. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Um, I will say it's kind of distracting to, to not laugh while all these people's shirts are blinking. <laughs> Even Pastor Trish is on the front row just, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's something. Anyway. When, and let me make this clear for people watching online, this is not my clothes. This is one time a year, ugly sweater year, I wear the ugliest thing I can find. So when they saw the star, that star began to move them and direct them in the direction of where the Savior was. That one star... Out of billions of stars, I don't know, have you ever tried to look up and see somebody says, hey, look at that star, and you're like, yeah, which one of the billions do you want me to look at? I mean, and they're like, that one right there, and you're like, are, get, are you serious right now? Like, that one right there, like, uh, here? And, you know, just point, yes, right there, and you're like, you liar. There's, I mean, <laughs> there's no way you and I are pointing at the same star, and you, you know where I'm coming from. And especially this last week, man, did you see the meteor shower and all that stuff? That was kind of cool going on. But out of billions of stars, there was one that God chose and lit it up especially bright so that he could get the attention of these kings that were, according to history, these guys were coming all the way from India. 
Go back and check this out. They're coming all the way from India to find Jesus Christ. And that star was so bright that they followed it from India to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And, and, and the star was bright because of its prox- proximity to the sun. You realize the moon really has no light. It just reflects the sun. You realize if there's any good in you, you're just reflecting the sun. Are, are you still here this morning? And, and, and it was that shining light that gave direction to the seekers and, and the worshipers. Some were from other religions, but the travel star is what they would use to get to that baby in a manger. And there was something about that star above all the other stars in the sky that night. When, when they finally get to Bethlehem and they are bowing down and worshiping the Savior, knowing the heaviness of that moment. Can you imagine being in that stable when, 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 when Jesus was born with Mary? And, and I'm sure they were thinking, God, I'm so thankful that you would put a star in my path so I didn't miss that moment, that, that you put something that I could follow so I don't miss one of the most important parts of my life because without that star, I would have missed the Savior. If you wouldn't have lit it up, I would have missed what this was all about. Without the star, I'd have missed the greatest moment of my life. And and it it all happens because God put a travel star to get them to a Savior when they were searching and when they were seeking. You say, Todd, where are you going with this? Just, Just stay with me. I thought about how none of us here today are here by accident. We're all here by divine appointment that, that all of us at one time or another have been starstruck. Are you still here? And, and if you know Jesus, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior this morning, at some time in your life, you have been starstruck that God used somebody because of their close proximity to the son, some mama some daddy, some grandma, some grandpa, some spouse, some brother, some sister, some friend. Maybe it was a preacher, but somebody got so close to the sun that their light began to shine and it began to get your attention that there was something different about that star. It shines different from all the other stars. When you were in sin and and, and when you were lost, but God in his great mercy lit up some Christians so brightly that they got your attention and God used them as a travel God, travel God to get you to where he was at. When you couldn't get to him, God made sure that you had a way. Some of us wouldn't be here today, but there was people that God put in our life that their light was just a little bit brighter than the other stars. Am I making sense to anybody? You can go back, and even when you go through rough times and hard seasons, you, 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 you know that there are people in your life that their stars just a little bit brighter than other people's stars, you know? And, and you'll call upon them for encouragement. You don't call on everybody for encouragement. There are some people you know before you pick up on the phone. There's a ways to call right here, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> There, I will be depressed within the first 50 seconds. <laughs> but there are, those some, there are those ones that you know when you call them, no matter what they're doing, they're going to answer that call. They're going to encourage you. And that star is going to be a little bit brighter than it was before, you, before the uh, phone rang out. Amen? Amen? They stood out in your darkness. It may be someone who's in heaven now. Maybe they've already gone on to see Jesus. But the truth is, if their light had not been so bright, no one would have followed them, including you. I went to my Aunt Marie's funeral a couple weeks ago. It was a crazy week. We had four funerals in one week. Rough week. By the way, tomorrow uh, here at the church at 2 o'clock, we'll be doing the services for uh, Charletta Brewer Durham. Uh, If any of you all knew her, we'll be doing her services tomorrow, memorial service. But I went to my Aunt Marie's funeral, and my cousin Cody was given a eulogy. And at the funeral, she was 84 years old, but there were about 150 to 200 people in that little church. It was full. I mean, it was completely full in that little church. 
And, and, and uh, my cousin Cody asked, how many people in this room have either been talked to about Jesus or were led to Jesus by my Mima? Now, unfortunately, I have to go to funerals all the time, and I do a lot of funerals, but I have never been to a funeral, funeral where someone asked that question, and literally every hand in the room went up. And it gave me a sense of pride and a sense of, I was so blessed that that was my Aunt Marie, that everyone in the room had either been led to Jesus by her or had been talked to about Jesus by her. Even some of my cousins were there and she was their Sunday school teacher and they had all come to Christ because of something they had taught. See, there was something brighter about her star than all the other stars. Am I making sense to everybody? There was something unique about her. And as a parent, The questions you have to ask yourself this morning, is your light bright enough that your children can use it as a travel guide to get to Jesus? Because I promise you that star that's in your house, you're leading your kids one way or the other. You are leading them to something. Now you can blame it on anybody you want to, but at the end of the day, this might hurt your feelings, but your kids are with you more than they are with anybody else. The greatest influence your children are ever going to have in their life are your, you, mom and dad. It's always amazing to me. I'll talk to people that come home and their kid got in trouble for cussing at school. And they're like, I don't know where he hears it from. And I'm like, ask me. I know. I've been to your house. <laughs> and then we'll get on to our kids for lying to us. Yet when the phone rings, we'll tell them, hey, shh, don't tell them I'm here. Shh. You just taught them how to lie. Don't lie. I'll whoop you for lying. Who is that? It's so-and-so. Oh, tell them I'm not here. Tell them. That star is leading them somewhere. It's getting quiet in here all of a sudden, isn't it? You know, everybody like, amen, hallelujah, while ago. And you're talking about lying people like, oh, shoot. I ain't coming next Saturday. I'm going to tell you that right now, preacher. As a husband... As a husband, is your light bright enough to lead your home as a travel guide to the Savior? What you're doing in your house is influencing your spouse. And if you're a single mom, let me ask you this. Is what you're doing in your home bright enough to lead your children to the Savior? When I think about things like this, I think about my grandma. And if you go to church here a lot, you, uh, at all, you'll hear me speak of my grandmother all the time. And, and I'm telling you, I would not be here today if God had not used her light as a travel guide for me to find the Savior. She would pray for me. Man, that, she had to be the one of the best prayers I've ever She'd mess my high up. I'm being, I'd be out trying to get coked up, just bought me a fresh eight ball, just got it cut up, about to do a line, and then all of a sudden I'd start feeling horrible for what I'm about to do. And I was like, shoot, does she know how much money she is costing me right now? She, I know she is praying. I know she is praying somewhere. And I'd be like, dead gum. But 25 years later, 25 years, this next year, 2017, I'll step into 25 years of preaching this gospel. 25 years later, I sure am glad my grandma was praying for me somewhere. 25 years later, that's a legacy. That doesn't happen by accident. That happens because somebody's shining star was brighter than the others. Come on, somebody. I remember, see, you, you, you come too late. They, they can't take that away from me, even though my grandmother is no longer here. I remember 18 years old, sleeping in the same bed with her. Yes, I was a grandma's boy. I don't care who don't like it, who wants to make fun of me. And I remember going to her house and spending the night, even at 18, and go into bed and she'd be knelt by the bed praying and wake up in the morning and she's still knelt by the bed praying. She's so much so that even when she got ready to move from this life to death, we were with her and my mom and then we were singing songs and hymns with her and she wouldn't go. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit impressed upon me to say something to her. And I leaned over and I said, Grandma, if you want to go ahead and go to heaven now, I'll be faithful to pray for your kids every day. She died right then. 
but she would not let go until that torch had been passed and she knew that there was going to be a star to light the way somehow. Come on, somebody. Whether you know it or not, you are a travel guide leading to somewhere. And I'm here today because God put some shining bright stars that led me to a savior. I think that there are times in your life you ought to just pull your car off on the side of the road and just bless God for the good people that he put in your life. I think there are times when you come to church, you ought to forget about who's Baptist, who's Catholic, who's Church of Christ. You ought to just throw your hands up and go for broke and bless the name of the Lord. Amen. At the end of the day, let me tell you, look, they're not checking your, your, your religious card at heaven's gate. That's not your entrance, just so you know. Like, I'm an American Express carrier. <laughs> You're not going to get to the gates. I'm, I'm independent Baptist. I'm Southern Baptist. I'm, I'm colonial Baptist. I'm this Baptist. You was a heathen just like the rest of us. <laughs> I'm Church of God. I'm Church of God in Christ. I'm Assembly of God. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of those cards are going to work. <clears throat> Jesus is going to look and see if the blood has been applied. And whosoever believes, oh my God, whosoever believes on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you hear me today? That's what God's interested in heaven. Not looking for your religious affiliation. Come on, somebody. Don't matter how many candles you take, how many incenses you carry up there. If the blood ain't there, you're not getting in. It's the blood. Somebody say it was the blood. Amen. Where would you be without that? God wants everyone in this room to be a shining star. There are people in your life right now that are seeking. What if in your life, those of you who are saved, what if in your life there was nobody that had a burden to pray for you? What if there was no one that had a burden to witness to you? That everybody just threw you to the curb. Because you, you know there are some people that you're here today that people just threw you to the curb and said, you'll never be anything. You're worthless. I'm tired of talking to you. And rightfully so. Can we just be real? If some, my grandmother would have told me that. I deserved it. I mean, I'm just not like I was going to be shocked. Like, you know what? You don't ever change. Like, mm. <laughs> Who am I going to be mad? I can't be mad at them. I got to be mad at myself. But so, so I'm so thankful that somebody had a burden what if no one had got close enough to the Son of God that their light would shine bright enough that it would touch you this morning? You stop and think about that. You can be the light to your family, that light to people on the job, that light to people in your schools. And, it, and it's not for your glory. And it's not for your honor. All you are is, is, is the one pointing to where the Savior is. But can I tell you something? He has got to you somebody. And everybody in this room it should be available to be used in the hand of God. Everybody in this room. When they got to the stable where the star was shining, I think they were kind of shocked. I don't think they expected the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to be in a stable. And it's not kind of the stables we think about. You'd have to go there to see. It's really not one of, even the nice barns we have. It's not really where, it was more like a cave atmosphere if you get into it. But they expected him to be at Herod's palace. That's why they went by there first. He'll be where the king's at. The king of the universe, surely the king of kings will be in the palace. But instead they followed this star and it didn't lead them to a palace. It led them to a stable. What do you do? I want to talk to some real people as I get at the end of this a little bit. What do you do when you follow the star and it leads you to a stable? What do you do when you have this expectation of going to the White House and you end up at the dog house? When you think you're going to the palace only to find yourself in a pit. What do you do when you follow that star and, and, and it leads you there? What do you do when you have a dream and you follow Jesus and you think that life is going great? It's candy land and shoots and ladders. Come on, somebody. And rainbows. 
and there's no problem, and you follow the ultimate star, Jesus, and you end up in a pit. Sometimes we almost think if we're not in the palace, then God isn't with us. If we're not living the palace life with everything coming our way and every blessing hitting our life, that, that, that somehow we must not be in the will of God. Anybody ever said, well, it's got to be me. It can't be God. I got to be out of the will of God for this to be going on. But the truth is, when you follow the real star, Jesus Christ, yes, thank God for the palace days. And thank him for the times when you're living on high and God is blessing you and everything is on a mountaintop. But I want you not to forget that sometimes you'll follow the star and you'll end up at a stable. You can follow the star and end up at a pit. What do you do when you take all that you own and you follow the star and you pray about it? And you launched your own business. And the economy shifts. And you were following the star. But all of a sudden you're in a pit. What do you do when it's the happiest day of your life? And you're saying, I do for the very first time. He loved you. She loved him. And you're following the star only to be divorced a year later and you find yourself in a stable. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Ever started out one way and it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go and you have all these questions. What do you do when your health is gone and you're sick and you're suffering and everybody's telling you, hold on. God's coming. Hold on. But you're in the stable. I think you do what these wise men did. They begin to look for God in the stable. I'm preaching today to tell you that God is not just there in the high times when you're living in the palace. But you'll find Jesus closer and nearer to you when you're in a stable. Come on, man. When when you're going through the lowest seasons of your life, when when nothing is going right, that's where you'll find Jesus. For some of us, the only way we would ever find Jesus is that God allowed you to move from the palace to the stable. There's some of us here today, he wouldn't have got us to t- our attention any other way. Some of us, they go, oh, come to Jesus. And we're like, oh, that's so sweet. The rest of us had to be with, with a two by four. You had to go to the school of hard knocks. Come on, man. There's some of us, when we pray, Jesus talks to us like, well, you know, it's going to be okay, and you're going to be fine. And you're like, praise the Lord. And then there's some of us that that Jesus got to get like that board. Boy, are you listening? (laughs) Now, I know Jesus don't hit you with a board, but do you ever live in your prayer closet? Like, this would have been a lot faster if he just hit me with a board. (laughs) I know nobody here on this side. Let me go. Anybody over here know what I'm talking about? Big Ron. Big Ron, don't you leave me by myself. You probably got a two by four in your truck right now. So, so <laughs> Listen to me. The only way you would have found him is to be in that situation. As long as you were on top of the world, you didn't need him. When he allowed you to go from the palace to the stable, you can actually say, Lord, thank you for the stable because this is where I found Jesus. And what they meant for evil, God turned around and made it good. And some guy, God has taken my mess and turned it into a message and a testimony for his glory. And I can give God a good shout of praise when I come to church. I ain't got to get wait for the worship team to get me primed up, baby. I was primed up when I got here because I know I don't deserve to be here. Can you say amen? When you follow a star and you end up in the stable, you look for God standing somewhere in the shadows. You will find Jesus. You will never be as close to God as you are in stables of your life. You know what else amazes me is that when the wise men got to the stable in a nasty environment. Yeah, animals in there. It's got to smell like poop. I don't do smells. Urine, stinky. Like I got my, my English master. She's in the house right now. <sighs> she smells so bad, and I'm spraying her with everything I got, man. Everything I got, and she just, and she thinks she weighs five pounds. She doesn't know she weighs 195 pounds, and so she wants to be all up in your lap. So you stink, and you know you're like, and you can't push 195 pounds of dead weight. I don't care how strong you are. 
said, get off, Maggie. <laughs> but it's dirty and it's damp and it's stinky. And in the midst of all this stuff that seems to be very unattractive, that seems to be something that you wouldn't even be able to press through trying to work through all the smells. And all the, they offer up their best worship. They begin to offer up their best worship in the place that you would think it would be least likely. I see, they, 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 they could have said, I'm not going to give my gold in a barn. I'm not going to, are you kidding me? I'm not open myrrh and frankincense. I'm not giving that out here in a stable. I want to get it. I want someone to recognize my gift. I don't even have time. My God, I don't have time. I want somebody to, I want to be there when they open it so everybody can go, oh, look what they brought to the party. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? I want that, man. This environment don't look right. I, I was following the star. I shouldn't be in a pit. I was doing the right thing. I shouldn't be in the midst of this foul smell. This doesn't look right. This is expensive worship, and it shouldn't be in a stable. It should be in the palace. See, I'm going to give my best worship when everything's going right in my life. I'm going to give my best worship when there are no questions. And, and, and that place, he'll really find that I love him when everything's going right. But these wise men were wise because they said God is in the stable and we're going to give our best in unpleasant circumstances. And what you need to learn, what you have to learn is not to just worship God in the palace life, but if you could ever learn to give your best praise in unpleasant circumstances, you will see God move mightily because the praise that costs the most is the one that counts the most. I wish somebody would hear me this morning. They gave expensive worship in a nasty filthy, disgusting environment. The praise that I believe God looks most for is when you're in the stables of your life and your life is shattered and you're hurt and you have no idea what the future holds, but you look back and you begin to praise God because you know how faithful he has been because you have seen stars before. And if you have seen them before, you know that you'll see them again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has made you more than a conqueror because he's getting glory out of your story and you're going to be a bright shining star and your light and your story is going to help somebody else. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Your best days are still ahead of you. I said your best days are still ahead of you. Even if you feel like you're in the stable, can you offer up an expensive praise this morning? Start your breakthrough right now and give God your best praise in the midst of your pain and your lack of understanding when you can't find him can I tell you he knows exactly where you're at this morning and he's not wondering if God be for you who can be against you today I'm not trying to nullify your pain I'm not saying it's not real I'm not saying it's unimportant what I am saying is if you focus on how dark it is you'll miss out on how bright the star is shining. You'll miss out on how bright the star is shining. If your head is bent over, they went to the widow woman. Elijah shows up, widow woman. Hey, girl, what's going on? And her head's bent down. And she don't even look up to answer. She just, well... Things really stink right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up these stakes, these sticks, and I got just enough oil and meal, and I'm going to go to the house, and I'm going to bake a cake for me and my kid, then we're going to die. Oh, boy, that sounds exciting. I'm so glad I asked what you were doing this afternoon. She didn't even realize the prophet. She didn't even realize a man of God was standing right in front of her because she was bent over, focused on her brokenness. She was so focused on her pain 
and picking up. She, <laughs> she was preparing to die. Some of us will confess one thing, but when it really gets down to it, we're just bent over, picking up. Our actions don't line up with our mouth. Probably nobody in this service, but at the next one, there'd probably be a handful. Uh, but she was so focused on her promise that she couldn't see that her redemption was right in front of her. And the man of God says something crazy to her. It's almost comical unless it's your situation, and then it's not funny at all. He says, well, girl, if you're going to die, go ahead and bake me a cake first. <laughs> okay. And she obeyed the word. She obeyed the word of the man of God, even when it didn't look like it made sense. That's the dumbest thing ever heard. Why am I going to feed you when I got one last piece of bread? I could fold it in two and make a jam sandwich. Y'all ain't never had a jam sandwich? Well, you ain't got no peanut butter, you ain't got no jelly, you just fold it and you jam that bread together? Boy, y'all grew up fancy. Jeff, you with me? Jam sandwich. Sandwich. Mm. And then you roll it into a ball. <laughs> now you with me. I got you. Word, that, that other word didn't make no sense, man. I got one, 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 one meal left. Or you, want, you want me to give what little provision I got to the church? That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. You better get ready for God to say some crazier things than that. If that's on your list of the craziest things you think God's going to ask you, I can tell you you've not followed him very far. You have not followed him very far. She obeys and she, it says, every time, lady, every time you go to the cabinet, there's going to be oil and there's going to be meal. See, the, 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 the flower truck never showed an 18-wheeler, never backed up to her house. They never unloaded the whole, like, six-month supply at a time. She had to trust God every day that when she opened up that cabinet, that provision was going to be here. You know why I think that is? Because if she'd have had a six-month supply, she'd have probably quit praying. So sometimes we have to have the stables instead of the palace. But here's the great thing about it is even in the stable, they were led by a star. And you may be here today, and you're just like, Todd, man, you, look, this, it's rough this Christmas, man. Somebody's not going to be at the table that's normally at the table. I don't have what I want to have to provide for my family. And that's tough. Look, I, I hear you. I hear you, man. I, I know what you're saying. And then we'll make it even worse. Out of guilt, we'll go buy presents we can't afford to get further in debt to keep up with the Joneses. And I've always wanted to know who the Joneses really is in the first place. <laughs> but it's human nature. You want your children to have better than what you have. And I understand that. And there's some brokenness in you today, and there's some sadness. And it's not just, this is not about Christmas. There's other situations that are here this morning. But I just got brokenness in this area of my life. And I'm tired. Pastor taught to be, not, tired's not even the word. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted over my brokenness. Does that, does that statement even make sense to you? I'm exhausted over my brokenness. Like... I used to fuel myself by telling the story, but I'm so tired of telling the story, I don't even want to hear it anymore. But even though I don't want to hear it, I'm still left with all the scars. So when I prepare for bed at night, all I see is the brokenness and the hurt and the pain. And I'm right back in that situation again. And I just need God to move on me today. I just need 
to follow that star to a good place and know that